Hey everybody, this is Tony and I'm here today with a special guest, none other than the Prince of Sophisticated Soul, Mr. Will Downing. How you doing today? I'm doing very well. Say it again. I like the, I like the way that sounds coming out of your mouth. <laughs> Prince of Sophisticated Soul. Prince of Sophisticated Soul. <laughs> What's going on, Mr. T? Nothing much. How you doing? Hey man, it's good, about as good as everyone else, man. You know, making it do what it do till we get to do what we do. Exactly. And, and speaking of what you do, I want to talk about some of the uh, music you got out. Uh, so you got Romantique Part Two, the EP, uh, out now. Uh, I know you did Part One in the latter part of last year, and now you got this one out this year. So Absolutely. talk to me a little bit about this project, uh, a two-part project, and you recorded some of the uh, a baritone singer from back in the day. Uh, well, yeah, covered. yeah, yeah, hey, man, you so, pretty much covered it. That's exactly what it is. It's these classic songs that were originally done by baritone vocalists, that of which I am. And there's right. very few baritone vocalists left in the world. I mean, at least that you get to hear about. So, um, you know, myself, Gregory Porter, a couple of other folks, uh, you know, men just don't sing in a low voice anymore. So I figured I would kind of bring it back a little bit, take some classic songs that everybody knows and kind of will downing eyes them and, you know, <laughs> make them my own. And, you know, not, not so that they're not unfamiliar to you, uh, but, you know, just sort of, add my little twist to it as well. And I had some friends over the years uh, that, that are friends of mine that have been friends of mine for years come and right. sing on it. So like Avery Sunshine, we do, we do a duet together uh, as well on the album. So, you know, I, I think it's a really good project. On part two, I incorporated some uh, of my original pieces on there as well. So you get to hear classics and you get to hear brand new music as well. Okay, okay. So now what went into the thought process behind uh, uh, the song choices? Because of course, you, you, the artists themselves, uh, you got like Barry White and Lou Rawls, uh, amongst others, but what went into the actual song choices? Well, a lot of the songs are songs that I kind of grew up with. Okay. Um, some of them were like favorites of like my parents, you know, like You'll Never Find. You couldn't tell my dad that there was another singer on the planet better than Lou Rawls. <laughs> So when I used to get in the car with him, man, it was just like, you'll never find. I was like, damn, I got to hear this record again. <laughs> it, it just stuck with me, man. So when I was working on this project, it was like one of the first ones that I said, yeah, I definitely got to do this song. So just, just classic songs that, you know, I love, other people have loved, and I could just hear like a different rendition of them. So, you know, it, it, it's not like, you know, Brian, it's not, you know, rocket science or anything like that, man. It's just something I just heard. Right, right. Okay. Well, so what made you break it up into two parts, uh, though? Money. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. Hey, money and lack there of it. Um, okay, okay. Okay, well, that, I mean, that's partially true. I mean, uh, I'm independent. So, you know, all the things that I've been doing for the last, I don't know, uh, five or six years have been kind of self-financed. And then the other thought process is that a lot of people, especially these days, they don't listen to music the way they used to. You right. know, um, you know, when you used to make an album, people would buy the album and you'd live with the album for a long time. Now yeah. there's so much music out and music is moving so fast. It's kind of like you put out an album, you know, and a few months later, folks are like, you know, well, what are you doing now? Uh -huh. I, mean, I, just, uh -huh. I just put this joint out like a few months ago. <laughs> hey, like, yeah, I already heard that. What else you got? So I said, you know what? You break this up, give you five now, that'll last, you know, five or six months, and then give you another five, that'll last, for, you know, for the rest of the year. And I think that's the way um, I'm going to continue to do it, you know. Um, okay. I just see me, I've just seen too many artists put out, like, full-length albums, and people just kind of, you know, yeah, they listen to about a minute and 30 seconds, they kind of, yeah, I like this one, I like this cut, I like this cut, I like this cut, and then they kind of throw the rest of the album out, so, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't like getting my feelings hurt like that. <laughs> you know and, and, and you you're definitely right though because you know now everybody is so uh like fast paced and and you know have short attention spans now oh, absolutely absolutely so because you know back in the days uh, you know i went back in the days but <laughs> you know <laughs> you, you guys used to play actual vinyl records from the beginning to the end you know yeah. stuff like that or even albums to the beginning to the end even even if it wasn't vinyl but still yeah. so it definitely has changed uh, a whole lot. 
But uh, as far as you recording music, though, you it seems like you have a knack for just uh, taking on uh, uh, other songs and just really, like you call it, a wheel down and not them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, what what has uh, really drove that for you? Uh, like for instance, uh, Denise Williams Free, you you took and made that your own one of the, your first singles. Uh, mm-hmm. From Where Is the Love, uh, uh, n- numerous songs. What, oh what? yeah, yeah that, they, they have made you wheel down in, in a way, and you have really made them wheel down in songs in a way. Well, yeah. Well, well, thanks first and foremost. Yeah, um, I've always like loved classic songs. And originally, when I would do these remakes, I would they would be basically from female artists. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I would do it to, so you get the male perspective. So, and yes, you're correct. The first song that I did back in 1988, which it seems like forever, uh, <laughs> was Free, was Denise Williams Free. So, yeah. you know, you listen to her version, obviously she's singing up in the stratosphere. And then you hear my version, and I'm singing down in the basement. So it automatically <laughs> makes it different. Um, but that's one reason and another thing is i've just always loved i've always remade songs that the thought their thought process is what i was trying to say i just couldn't say it any better so mm-hmm. like um like angela bowfield's i try oh yeah oh yeah. yeah yeah so you know men feel the same exact way we all try and i was like let me write a song like i try but I, she said exactly what i wanted to say and I couldn't say it any better, so why? You know, just yeah. kind of, you know, use what she's already, the, use the same blueprint. Just follow the, you know, follow the map and do the same exact thing and just do it in your own way. So, you know, that's right, another right. thing. That's, I always thought that was a, a, a great thing. I, I think it's a gift, I, I want to say, actually, to be able to take something that's already been done and, and make it your own because a lot of the songs that you cover, people listen to them and it's like, okay, this is Will Downing's song. You don't necessarily <laughs> say this is Denise Williams' song or this is Angela Bofield's song. Hey, listen, don't don't tell them that I said that. <laughs> hey, you said that. That wasn't me. You don't get my ass kicked. <laughs> you say, Ain't my right. I'm kicking his ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you really, you really have, uh, uh, you know, just just made them your own in, in a great way because. You know that sometimes people pick up songs and it's like, okay, why did you even pick this up? And in your case, it's like, okay, you hit it spot on. You, you matter of fact, you made me almost think that this was a totally different song. Well, hey man, thanks. Well, that's the goal. If you're gonna do a remake or if you're going to reinterpret a song, uh, if you don't bring your own spin to it, and if you're not gonna make it your own, then don't do it. I mean, yeah, anyone can yeah. go back and listen to the original, and you know. So yeah, bring your own thing to it. You know, even if it's just your own emotion, you know, just don't mock the original, you know, line for line, breath for breath. Or, you know, you gotta, exactly. you gotta bring something to the table. Exactly. Of course, uh, your last uh, album too, I wanna talk about that, um, was your gospel album, The Promise. Mm-hmm. Uh, your first gospel album, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Um, so w- what was the uh, inspiration behind that album, uh, it being your first and it being gospel? Because you normally sing jazz and R&B type of songs. Right, 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 yeah. Um, my parents, well, especially my mom, has been trying to get me to do a gospel album. <laughs> I can't count the amount of years. I mean, from the moment that she heard me sing and said, oh, okay, you all right. You know, it's been like, you want to do a gospel album? And, you know, so like. That's right. Nah, Ma, I think I'm going. I think I'm going. And every album, I said, Ma, I think I'm going to. I think I'm going to. And then in uh, 2006, 2007, I got like really, really, really sick. Mm-hmm. And I was hospitalized for like a long time. And when I was lying in the hospital bed and really not able to do anything, I kind of like, you know, negotiated a deal with God. You know, I call it negotiating a deal. You know, this Negro. <laughs> Trying to trying to like keep his life, so I'm like, hey Lord, you get me up out of this bed, you get me up out of this wheelchair, you get me up out of this whatever. I said, man, I'm gonna do that gospel album. I promise you, Lord, I promise you, I'm gonna do that's it. That's right. And you know, my mom was there throughout the throughout the whole process. So you know that's why the album is called The Promise. I, I said I was gonna do it, and I'm a man of my word, so I did it. All right, well, that makes sense though. And you know what? I, I think. 
uh, if she don't remember nothing else or no, no other song from she, I'm sure she remember that album. <laughs> yeah, listen, I, I think to this day, and I've been doing this for 32 years, my mother still ain't 100% sure how the hell I make a living doing this. Because <laughs> I like, I'll be, uh, the last show she came uh, to see me perform, it was me and Gladys Knight. Okay. And uh, it was in Brooklyn, you know, where I'm from. And, and you know, she, I moved from there, but she lives uh, not far from where we were performing. So she came out to the show and she, she, she was over there thanking Gladys for having me on the show. Like, <laughs> like Gladys was doing me a favor. <laughs> like it was like hired a handicap day or something like that. She's like, right, oh, right. Oh, 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 Miss Knight, it was so nice of you to have him. I was like, am I, I sold a couple of tickets here. <laughs> That's right, nice. Right, right. Yeah, that's Gladys Knight, baby. You just, yeah, you just. <laughs> so, yeah, so like I said, to this day, she doesn't get it. So as you said, this is an album she will never forget. If I never do anything else in life, that's, uh, I, I made mom happy. I'm sure, I'm sure. And I, I think uh, if, if, if there's nothing more in this world, most of us pretty much say we want to make our parents happy or mother happy. There you happy. go, so there you, you go. You already hit it on the head. Thank um, but God I did something right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I, I found it interesting in listening to your story and, and, and reading about your story that in the beginning, like uh, in your early years, you, did, you said you weren't even interested in singing. And, you know, here you are now, 30-something years later, still doing the same thing. So how, how did that work out for you? How, how did you, did you ever think you would end up in this spot right here? No. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, not at all. Um, as you said, yeah, when I came out of, and when I was in high school, I was studying music in high school uh, right. because a teacher just thought that I had some talent. So I ended up going to this school uh, and it just shows you how, how God works. Um, right. I was going to leave high school or I graduate from high school and I was going into the military. So I was going into the, the Marines. So like my next 20 years was mapped out. Uh, me and my buddy, we were signing up for this program. It was called the, the 2020 program, the Buddy Buddy 2020 program. So uh, what you do is you sign up with your friend, your buddy, and you go everywhere together while you're in the service. But you have to sign right. up for 20 years. So you're linked up. If, there was, if, if they were sending me to San Diego or to overseas, then my buddy was going with me. You put 20 years together. And they call it the Buddy Buddy 2020 program. So we went down to the recruiter's office and he signed up and I was signing. And then the recruiter looked at my birthday and he said, hey, man, you, you're 17. I said, yeah. And he goes, now you got to be 18 in order to sign, in order to join. So mm -hmm. you know, I, I took the paperwork home to my parents and they just like, they, they hell no. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like, nah, nah, nah. We we ain't signing this. I'm like, yeah, but this is, you know, this is a promissory note. And they were like, nah. <laughs> so uh, fortunately, for, right, obviously, years later, that they did not sign and I did not go. But it kind of prompted me to dig into this music thing even more. So I ended up going off to college. Uh, a college had accepted me in Virginia, a school called Virginia Union University in Richmond, Virginia. And they gave me a scholarship to go study music down there. So I went to Richmond, I studied there for a year. Then I came back home to Brooklyn and I went to Brooklyn College for about six months and I ran into a buddy of mine who does music and we started a band. And we just started playing around town and somehow we made a demo and somehow someone heard it. And they like me, and they called me to come and sing on their project. And then the ball has just been rolling like that ever since. So that was like early, early 80s. So I'm singing back then, doing background vocals for whoever would call. And, yeah. uh, you know, I got very fortunate in 87 and got signed for a solo deal. And 88, I put out my first record, and I've been putting out records every two years ever since, as you can see all the stuff behind me that's. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went from hair all the way up top, the orange one, to hair, <laughs> hair, little less hair, ball headed, ball headed, ball headed, ball headed. You know, so. You can always tell an album uh, uh, or what kind of year it was based on the album cover, though. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. 
Yeah, it's a transformation. Hey, but I'm still here, so you know. Maybe exactly. Maybe. I, I mean, that's it, honestly, it's a it's a blessing for that. Um, and and you have put out over twenty something albums now at this point. I'm working on twenty four um, as we speak. Yeah. Right. See, so l- let me ask you this though: Is there a top five or a top anything out of the all the albums that you've done that you just say Ooh. these are the ones for me? Hey man, that's like saying I got a favorite kid. I got like three of them, you know. Like, hey, I like the boy. Give me the boy. Yeah. Uh, for me, let me see. Let me take a look here. Probably the biggest one and my favorite is get my bearings together here. Yeah, top that brown one. Uh, a dream fulfilled. That's my favorite. Um, because I was challenged on that one. The record company. Uh, didn't want me to make that type of record. I'd had a lot of success with the very first two albums overseas, uh, which had, you know, the song Free on there. But I had another record on there called A Love Supreme, which did really, really, really well. It was kind of like a dance, like a house record. And we did really well with that. And um, then I put out another album a few years later, and we had another hit called Come Together As One, which is another like, you know, 120 beats per minute. It was just like, you know, banging. And in the mm-hmm. third album, they were like, yo, that's what we want, a whole album of that. And I was like, nah. <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm not going to be able to do it. So I said, hey, right, man, right. I got all the musical stuff that I want to do. And uh, we fought like, you know, like cats and dogs. And they finally kind of let me do the album I wanted to do. Or they, they kind of questioned me on it. And I, you know, I put my best foot forward and my best effort in. And we came up with this album, uh, Dream Fulfilled. So for me, that's like top, top, top. I mean, another one is obviously The Promise because I promised I was going to make this record and yeah. given a second opportunity, you know, from the most high and made my mom happy and all of that. Um, some of the other ones. Uh, Pleasures of the Night, which is uh, Bam, him. That uh-huh. was me and my man, Gerald Albright. Um, after tonight, which is uh, him right there, <laughs> mainly because um, I made that record. This is gonna sound nutsy cuckoo when I say this, but I made that record from a hospital and a hospital bed and a wheelchair. So, oh wow, yeah, two thousand six, two thousand seven, yeah. So that like really, that it's it's one of my favorite records, but at the same time, I can't listen to it. Yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, when I listen to it, it takes me like right back to, you know, when I was like unbelievably sick. So it kind of like it's a mental thing with me. But, you know, the mere fact that I was able to get through it, you know, means a lot to me. Okay. So, there you go. And I have a Christmas record. So I did, I don't know what year this was, uh, him. <laughs> yeah, so that's my only Christmas album. So that would be probably my top five. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Now, of course, you got a lot of uh, uh, classic songs uh, from A Million Ways to I Try, um, even your duet with Rochelle Pharrell, yeah. uh, amazing vocalist. Um, so w- what I'm wondering from you, though, when you perform these songs, like, for instance, I Try, mm-hmm. uh, I know that was a, a personal, a, a, a lot of your songs are personal, uh, like Sorry I, I'm sorry, mm-hmm. that's what it was, mm-hmm. uh, are personal for you. So when you sing these songs today, do they take you back to the moment that you, you know, first sung it or wrote it? Or, or... Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it's funny that you mentioned that song because people will remind you, they'll take you back to that moment, uh, you know, when they first heard it, and it takes you back there as well. Um, yeah, yep. And it's, what else is funny about that song is women hate that song. <laughs> And men love it. So yep. normally the other way around with me. It's normally like people that come see me live. It's normally the women that kind of say, I want to go see, I want to go hear him. And the guys are like, hey, <laughs> it's, this dude. And, but with that one song, it's like the fellas kind of like, they come up to me and it's like, yo, man, it's like you were in my crib. You know, like, that's my story. That's it. So, you know, men love that song. Women, eh, not so much. I mean, they like the song, but just the, the sentiment. And the, the definition behind it, they ain't nuts about. Well, you know, but that's what music is. It's something different to everybody. Yeah, yeah, of course. And and you you can't uh, have the same kind of content or subject on every song anyway. So 
it, yeah. it has to switch at some point. <laughs> And you're right. So, you're right. Yeah. 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 And yeah. You, you, we can't really please everybody. I mean, we, you, we you try, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll put it to this, and, and I, just to show you how much that what you just said has meaning. I can do a show, and this happens after every show. If I see people after the show, I always hear this line, and it bothers the. the it bothers me. <laughs> I can do 90 minutes on stage, right? And sing everything under the sun. Literally, after every show, somebody walks up to me, and it's mainly women, they'll go, I'm mad at you. Uh -oh. You're mad at me. You ain't sing my song. What's your song? Album number six, song number eight. You know it. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like, and by this time, I'm like drenched. I'm soaking wet. Um, my heart beating double time because, you know, I done put in all this time on stage. And the first freaking thing you're going to say to me is, you ain't sing my song. I'm mad at you, Will Down. <laughs> it's my behind. <laughs> I'm like, you know I got, what? got 100 albums out. You know, I ain't sing your song. Cut number nine off album 15, you know. <laughs> It's normally something way deep down in an album that m most people probably w wouldn't have picked out either. Yeah, right. It's normally like <laughs> it's normally the B side cut that might have been a filler cut on an album, but you know it means something to you know whoever was listening, and that's what music yeah. is. So you know I'm, I'm I'm mad with them, at, but at the same time I'm I'm great you know grateful to be uh, supported in that way. Yeah, yeah, of course. Because sometimes it's almost like you kind of being a, a little. Uh, selfish at this point. <laughs> right. Just, just a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Come, come on now. You see, I just put in all this work. I just sung all these songs. And you going to yeah. ask for another one at that? Don't care. Matter of fact, <laughs> they damn near want you to sing it in their ear. It's just like, that's oh, right. That's my right. song. I was like, well, what song is it? They'll tell me what it is. And I was like, I just start singing it in their ear. They go, oh my God. I'm going to remember this. Are you going to remember this moment? And then the next time I see them, they'll say, you remember me? And I go, there you go. You sung in my ear. I was like, I <laughs> <ears."> like, <laughs> come on. You were in a black dress, weren't you? She said, I was. Like, yeah. all the women wear black dresses and black or red. <laughs> I don't. I never understood people want wanting you to remember them all the time either. Especially, you know that it, obviously you're an entertainer. You travel around the world, uh -huh. and you think I'm supposed to remember every single person I see. And mm -hmm. a lot of them get upset with you sometimes. And it's like, all right, really. Come but on. They, hey, little, they stand there and they like, that's, and I, cause I'll, you know, I'll, I'll lie, I'll make something up. I say, yeah, I remember you. What's my name? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, a pretty lady. Guess what, <laughs> that's what you call me. Like, you remember what I did to you? I'm like, you kissed me on my head. You're right. I kissed you on your head. I'm like, they all do that. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> You know what? It's a shame, and, and, and all you're doing is saying something that, that's generalized, and they just pick up on it. They fall right in place. You're wearing a black <laughs> dress. I was wearing a black dress. Like, see? What's my name? Exactly. Lady? <laughs> oh, man. No, but that's a good one, though. But, you know, speaking about your, your audiences, um, you know, as, as far as music is concerned, I was watching uh, one of your old interviews you did with, on uh, Video Soul. Oh. And uh, oh. you talked about. <laughs> oh, Donnie Simpson. Lord. Yeah, yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo, so, Lord. <laughs> and you mm -hmm. guys were talking about pretty much how you, uh, uh, I guess he was basically trying to tell you or, or how he felt that you were underrated, basically, in, in so many mm -hmm. words, um, and, and why you never really popped uh, the way that Luther and different people did. Mm -hmm. um, and, and of course, you have a lot of success over in Europe, even even when you didn't have it here, right. uh, or even if you had success here, it wasn't as big as it was over there. So I wanted to know: Did that kind of thing bother you, you know, um, in in your career early on? In the early days, yeah, it did. Okay. It did because you know you want to be recognized for your accomplishments, and you don't want to be you don't mind being compared, but you don't want to be in the shadow of someone your whole life. Right. So, yeah, I mean, that bothered me a lot. And then I would see 
a lot of artists that I came up with like have like huge, 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 huge hits, you know, and then mine would kind of be marginal or like, I, you know, we all have egos as artists. Right. And when I was coming up, the only thing I wanted, to be brutally honest with you, I wanted like my friends to hear me on the radio where I live. And okay. it just was not happening. And so <laughs> it, it, it just wasn't. I mean, I grew up uh, in New York and the station in New York was uh, WBLS, you know, so that was like the big station. So like, I was like, you know, they, they're gonna play my record. They play my record at like two o'clock in the morning or three in the morning, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, like ain't nobody listening. There's a bunch of truckers, you know, exactly. who need something to listen to at, at two or three in the morning. So, I mean, after a while it bothers you, but the one thing that I've always wanted when I did start doing this music full time was what I got was a long career and where other artists have come along and they might have hit bigger and then kind of faded out, you know, I've been able to kind of stay steady and, you know, have a career. And like when I see a lot of those artists now, I mean, that's the one thing that they say to me that's like, yo, man, I can't believe you lasted this long. And not because of lack of anything or I got lucky or this, that, and the other, but it was like, yeah, man, that's what I wanted. But I ended up following the trends of the time and then the, tre then the trends changed. So, right. Yeah, like when New Jack was hot, like, oh, yeah, man, you got to do a New Jack. I was like, I ain't doing nope. it. No. <laughs> you're crazy. You're crazy. And then I would see them hit. And I see them have this success, and then New Jack stopped. And they were like, well, what do I do now? And they were like, yeah, uh -huh. you labeled a New Jack artist. So, like, <laughs> sorry, we moved on, so we got someone else. But for what I do, I do ballads and mid-tempo songs. That's what people want to hear from me. And, yeah. you know, those, those, those type of songs are timeless. So I've been able to make a career out of it. So, yeah long run you know what was it the the the, the tortoise that won the race you know wasn't the hair he, he ran faster but the tortoise won because he was consistent that's right that's right and i i think uh i i honestly believe uh, a lot of what donnie was saying at that time was true because you you are an underrated artist but i think in a way god was really protecting you um, and, I, and I say that only because sometimes when we get overexposed to things, we don't know what to do with it. And yeah. like you say, it, had you hit big, you probably would have been one of those people to fade out too. Absolutely. So because yeah. of the space that you were in, you were able to maintain what you had, keep an audience, a core audience, and still mm -hmm. do what you wanted to do. Because you know already if you would have switched your style, the label, if you would have oh. been on one, would have said, hey, well, we want this kind of style now. Right. Okay, right. This, is, this is what's hot. We want this now. And right. here you are wanting to do R and B and jazz, and it's like, no, we need you to do pop. Yeah. Okay, we need you to we need you to sound like Michael Bolton. We need you to sound like these kind of people now. Right. So yeah. I, I think in a way God really uh, uh, protected you, and and then you still are are able to sing. You still have a, a great voice, okay. unlike uh, 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 you know some people lose voices, yeah. you know, and it, it's unfortunate, but they do. But yeah. you know you're still able to be here after twenty what twenty three twenty two albums. Yeah, and still be able to sing exactly the same way you did when you came in, if not better. Well, I, I, I don't know about exactly or even better, but, <laughs> but I, I tell you what, I won't embarrass myself on stage. And <laughs> I, I've told certain people in my life, I said, hey, when I get to that point, you know, and I ain't sounding the way I should sound, I'm like, let a brother know. No, exactly. Uh, <laughs> he say, exactly. y'all ain't gonna talk about me, boy, because I, <laughs> I, I hear some artists and I just sit there and kind of go, yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's time. Like, stop. <laughs> you you yeah. gonna mess up your legacy if you keep going. Like, just stop. Just leave it exactly. alone. Exactly. You know, exactly. let's just call it a career. You know, man. Yeah, we have beautiful memories. I want to remember. It's like a fighter going like one or two too many fights. It's kind of like, you know, hey man, you, you know, the best of you of what you've got to offer is behind you. Like, stop. It's gone. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go. And you know, it, it's crazy and it's sad sometimes because we'll see these kind of people on stage, but just because we love them, we won't even say nothing. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm like, really? Come on, man. Yeah. Y'all, yeah. somebody just get these people down. Just, just say, you know what? It's all right. We'll, we'll <laughs> just let the track play. <laughs> uh, hey, listen. If someone ever hits me with the bless his heart type of thing, bless his heart. <laughs> like, ah, that's it. <laughs> you didn't hit me with the bless his heart. <laughs> it's over. It's over with then. It's and over. It's, it's like, that? what? What more do you have after somebody tell you that? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. You said we're all. Oh, yeah. I heard you. Bless his heart. <laughs> Come on, like, now. I quit. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's no. I don't even think it's a point lower to go from there because no. they 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 trying to be nice and still <laughs> you know tell you off. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's too much. <laughs> it's too much. It, it's like come on now. Yeah. Oh yeah. man. But yeah. But I I want to talk about uh, uh your unsung episode too. So you you mm. did a unsung episode about two years ago. I think it was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And, you know, it, it revealed a lot about your, your life, of course, uh, and it, which is supposed to. Um, but how was that experience for you uh, unpacking a lot of that stuff? Because I know some people don't uh, enjoy those kind of things. <laughs> well, you know what? It was, it was interesting, and I actually wanted to do it. Okay. Uh, um, because, because of the type of career that I've had. Uh, a lot of people don't know anything about me. I mean, they may know a few songs, but they just think that I appeared, you know, from nowhere. Uh, yeah. And they know nothing about who you are. I mean, they know what you look like, but they don't know your personality. They don't know your upbringing. They don't. So I, I think it's, I think that things like that, especially for an artist like myself, it needs to happen. You know, just yeah. so that people will know once you moved on that you were here. Yeah. You know, Ooh. that's real important, you know, for for people in general, because, you know, now we see people, they pass away and we boo-hoo for about that long. And then that's, that's it. It's like they were here and now they're not. And that's yeah. it. <laughs> and so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to have something documented visually was important for me. And yeah, some of the stuff was, was, was great to see. And some of it was painful to relive. But, yeah. you know, you sit back and you go like, yeah, well, that, that's my life. You know, that was it. So this is a good representation of who I am or who I was. Uh, if someone sees this thing years later and it's not embarrassing, you know. Yeah. So I can live with that. So it, it, it was a great experience for me, man. I, I loved every moment of it. I was one of those people that was like, yeah, man, we need to do another hour. And they were like, nope, <laughs> yeah, one hour. <laughs> like, that's my whole life, 60 minutes. They were like, nah, it's really cut down because we got commercials <laughs> that's right that's right <laughs> don't forget it because they they always i've seen the reply on uh, tv one station reply you know they have people working for them of course but they said uh -huh. uh, to somebody oh we still got to pay bills <laughs> we still got to pay, pay them bills baby sorry so that's tell your right. story so yeah I, I was really pleased with it and i was happy that they uh that they picked me as one of the artists that year to, to do it yeah, I, I think it's a, always a, a great thing for people to see, too, because, you know, sometimes they only listen to the songs or even they might come to the concerts, but people really don't know what you have to go through from day to day right. being an entertainer, not even just right. a singer, but being an entertainer, because it's, it's just a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> from, yeah. like you said, even producing, from writing, to coming up with a song, to even getting it put out, all of that stuff takes a process and right. sometimes, a, a, you know, a team. Yeah. And when you're independent, it's even harder. So yeah. I think it's very important for people to see those kind of things and to, to know the, the in-depth uh, uh, look or, or person to say, okay, yeah. this is Will Downing, but, you know, I, I know him for this song, but now I, I know, you know, him a little better. Now I know this about him. And, you know, right. those those kind of things help because they see you as human sometimes from that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It, it's funny, man. That it's funny that you say that because a lot of people think, a lot of people don't think of this as work. Right. You know, it's kind of like, you know, yeah, <laughs> you don't really work. I was like, like hell, I don't. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, like all this music where you think that I just went in there and one time we just, we all played it one time and, and then we just released it the next day. I'm like, yo, man, this is like a process. Yeah. You know, I mean, a, a, an album, I mean, a, a good one, a complete like 10, you know, eight, 10 song package. I mean, that could take a year. It could take years. I yeah. mean, 
It's like crafting, cutting, carving. Hey, is this the best it could be? Do it again. All right, does this work with that? Does that work with this? It's like people don't get it. They don't. No, they don't. Yeah. They don't. And, and then, like you say, uh, too, at the end of the day, when I'm only getting a finished product, I never know what went into it. Right. And, right. It, and that's even like it, with, with food, for instance. You don't know what somebody had to go through just to even prepare that meal. Just right. for you to just sit up there and just say, this is good. Yeah. And boy, and that, drives me, <laughs> that drives me crazy. Not with the food <laughs> aspect of it, but from the musical standpoint, like, and we talked about this earlier, the mere fact that people don't listen the same way. So they listen yeah. to a minute, you know, a minute and 20 or 25 seconds. They kind of go, yeah, I don't like it. I'm like, I tell you what, you know how long it took me to do that damn song? Or you going to listen to this song again. Exactly. <laughs> Like, it took me months to do this one song. Like, I'm going to need you to get, kind of give me just a little bit more respect. Just go ahead and please listen to the whole thing. If you, after it's all said and done, you don't like it, I get it. But give me like one or two listens before you decide like, hey, I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes they don't even listen. They just play it. And then it don't sound like something that they realize that they know. So then it's like, oh, okay, I don't want to listen to this. That's it. <laughs> That's it. 100%, bro. 100%. Yeah. Listen, I'm telling you, I know, I've seen it. Oh, and yeah. sometimes, uh, uh, I know for myself now, sometimes you might listen to something and catch on to you later. Now, yeah. that I can understand. But some, most of these people just listen to that minute and, and 20 seconds, like you said. And then it's just yeah. like, oh, no, don't worry about it. Yeah, and these days, people don't come back and listen to it again. You know, that's nope. the bad part. It's kind of like there's so much, you know, when you turn your computer on or your phone on in the morning, you're inundated with like so much information that like entertainment could be like the bottom of the list. So as soon as you turn your computer on, it's like you got 50 emails that you got to deal with. Insurance. Yep. Da, 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 da. And then there's someone showing you how they, how they mama made chicken soup or whatever. <laughs> and people are beat up within like 10 or 15 minutes. And then here you come with your little song. You got, yeah, check my song out. They're like, all right. Uh, <laughs> Okay, cool. All right, let's move on to the next thing. It's like, ah, oh, man. So yep. I always tell people, in my opinion, the internet is one of the greatest inventions ever made, ever invented. But it's also the worst, one of the worst inventions ever made. I'm like, it's just, it's way too much information. It just makes people believe that there's something that they're not. It's, right. You know, it's, it's distracting. It's, you know, it's it's the it's a way to make yourself more intelligent, but we're dumber now than we've ever been. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I couldn't have said it better. <laughs> yeah, man, unbelievable. Couldn't have said it better. It's it's crazy too because just like you said, it, it, now people get online and it's almost like I can say anything I want to say. I can be anything I want to be because I'm behind this, this this phone or this tablet or this computer. So right, they don't know the real me. Right, and it's it's almost crazy because it's it's almost like a a, a disorder in a in a way. <laughs> well, yeah, it ain't almost crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, I mean, people have lost their jobs. Like, there's no jobs out here for people because everyone thinks that they're an expert at what it used to take an expert to do. Like, I know people that don't go to the doctor; they go on uh, YouTube. They post oh, yeah. like what they're feeling, or they go to WebMD or some. And they punch it up and they look at it and they kind of go, oh, yeah, I got that. Yeah, uh -huh. okay, I'll go to the doctor. Or I looked at YouTube and they told me all I needed was a little bit of honey, you know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> three hamburgers and a nail. <laughs> and I'm good. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, hey, you, they cut your foot off, fool. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> hey man, the internet is crazy. <laughs> yeah, it so. is. It is. It, it really is a, a place where you see literally everything and every kind of person there is to see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there are people that I see on there that call themselves artists. And it's just like, you're not an artist. Like, no. I am an artist. I mean, look how many likes I got on the internet. I'm like, but that's. That you're not an artist, but I got more right. likes than you. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, but you're not an artist. Internet says I'm an artist. So it's like, I'm actually having an argument with someone who, 
was uh, worked for FedEx one day and was an artist the next. Like I got a record. Right. <laughs> like everybody got a record out. <laughs> like that don't still don't make a damn artist. So yeah, they don't understand that you know these things take actual time and and perfection of the craft. And that's something that I, I appreciate in people and artists like yourself and and other great artists because you can tell that you actually you know perfected your craft. You focused yeah. on it. That was something you 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 were actually uh. uh you know, wanting to do, and you really went out and did it. It's not like you just picked it up today and then you said, "Hey, I'm just going to play around with a couple of things and see if it sound good." So right, yeah, yeah, but that's what people are doing, and hey, and and some people are hitting, you know, which is even more crazy to me. But you know, <laughs> it, it's almost as if someone who just got their license like last week, and then they jump on the highway and they drive in the left hand lane. It's like, I've never done this before, but yeah. I think I'm going to drive in left-hand lane. It's like, nah, you, nah, you supposed, why don't you go over here, go on the far right? Like, no, 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 left-hand lane is open. I'm going to drive in the left-hand lane. Like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't understand it at all. Yeah. But I, I really, uh, I really hope that they gain something from it because, Right about now, it, 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 it's no good. <laughs> hey, listen, they ain't gaining nothing from it. They're in the way for the moment, and it's they just move on to the next thing. It, it, yeah. It's like there's no remorse. There's no, hey, I made a mistake. It was just like, I did it, you know. <laughs> and and it's, it's everybody. Just like, you know, they, they just don't think of what you do as being special. It's like, yeah, you know, I put out all this music. They're like, yeah, I got a CD coming out next week. I got a uh -huh. uh -huh. Really? Like, yeah, man. I just, you know, I pay two ninety nine. I get da 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 da, and I da 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 da, and it's coming out next week. I, you know, I, I sing your MP three. Like, oh, okay. Yep. <laughs> so, yep, it's it's like crazy. Time. It's crazy. All right. Well, you, we talked about uh, romantic part two earlier. Um, so what it what is a uh, uh, next for Mr. Will Downing? Uh, we we got this out, and are you are, are you already thinking ahead, or what what are we planning to do? Well, during this COVID season, I've actually recorded another album, so I've already got like nine songs done. And okay. oddly enough, I'm dropping something on November 11th okay. called uh, "Why Do the Good?" Or so I'm sorry, "So Many Good Die Young," and it was inspired by, uh, sadly enough, uh, hearing about Chadwick Boseman. And oh, yeah. you know, not realizing that he was sick uh, and him passing away at such a young age. And me and this other gentleman who did the song, <clears throat> you know, we got to thinking like, how many other people have been in that situation? Like, there's so many people that we, you know, we kind of revere that have done yeah. amazing things that passed away at like such a young age. And yeah. we wrote a song called So Many Good Die Young. And we cut a little video for it. So you'll see like a Chadwick Boseman. Um, or you'll see Biggie. You'll see Tupac, Aaliyah, uh, you know, Whitney. You know, and then when you, when you see their ages pop up on the screen for, what, uh, for the age that they passed away, it'll mess you up. Yeah, because, yeah. Or like a Marvin Gaye. Like, you know, or... or or Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King and um, and Malcolm X. Like, yeah, yeah. They they both died at the age of thirty nine. That's it. Thirty nine. When they were thirty nine years old, them dudes had changed the world. I was thirty nine years <laughs> old. I think I was still picking my nose and doing. I'm like, <laughs> like, like you realize you haven't done anything in comparison yeah. to these these amazing people that have literally changed the face of the earth yeah. so it's a it's a, a video of, of people like that so I, I think it's a great song it's it's a sad song so you know when you do hear it, you're gonna need the tissue because it's, <laughs> it's gonna remind you of anyone that you've had in your life uh that is gone uh, so it's that sort of a song but it, it's a it's probably one of the probably one of the most thoughtful songs I've ever done. It'll be a song that'll last forever. You know, but, you know, unfortunately, it's always going to be a case where someone passes away. So I would assume yeah. that it'll be sung at like home goings and, you know, all of that. So 
you know, it's a, but, but it's a great song. And so I'm really looking forward to see uh, how people react to it when they hear it. So November 11th, so many good Die Young will come out. Okay. But I think that's an awesome, uh, 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 you know, topic to, to make a song about, though. Although it can be sad, like you said. But I yeah. think that's an awesome thing because sometimes people don't understand. And I think uh, as humans, we don't understand because we, we try to understand everything. But it's right. not meant sometimes. Did and right? sometimes the, the good die young because sometimes they just fulfill their purpose already. And Preach. It, Preach. It, it, it is what it is. But we, we want them to stay here forever because we love right. them and they, they did something good. But it's, it's like, okay, my time is up. I got to go. Right, right. So right. I, I'm, right. I'm glad that you did uh, touch, touch on that in a, a song, uh, song subject, uh, you know, for, you know, this time, especially too. Especially oh, with so much going on in this, this crazy time of COVID. So oof. that's awesome. <laughs> thank, you. thank you very much, man. Appreciate it. No problem at all. Well, just before you go, just let everybody know where they can find you on your social media uh, network, uh, your website, all that good stuff. And that's where they can get uh, the, the EP as well. Uh huh. Uh, well, you can get the EP on iTunes or Amazon or whatever uh, engine search engine you like to 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 find your music. It's always it's all there somewhere. So punch in, you know, Will Downing, Romantic Part One, Part Two, or any of my classic music as well. Uh, you can always find me on Instagram. I'm Will Downing Three uh, on Instagram and Twitter. On Facebook, I'm Will Downing Singer. Uh, or you can come to my website, WillDowning.com. Or just punch in my name, and if you see anyone that looks remotely like me, just press like. Or press, <laughs> you know, <laughs> confirm. Come on, whatever. You know, it, it's me. That's right. It'll tell you what I'm doing and what I ain't doing, or where I'm going or where I ain't going. <laughs> you know, these days. So it'll keep. It'll, it'll get you up to speed with me. That's right. Absolutely. Well, of course, I want to thank you so much, Mr. Downing, for doing this, and, and you know, just having a great conversation with me about music and life and all the great things, you know, sometimes people need to hear some uplifting things like music instead of who's dying in the day. So I, I, I do appreciate you so much for spending Thank your time you, with me. Thank you. It was my pleasure, man. Really enjoyed No it problem myself. at all. And, and anytime you have anything else, of course, we could do another one and help promote that as well and always keep in touch. You got it, man. So I'm going to send you that piece as well, man, so you can check it out. Okay. Sounds good. And thank you. Good. Enjoy the rest of your evening, okay? Yeah, you too. All right. All right, then. Bye-bye. See you. All right.